Okay. So I'm going to put this first and then whatever I was doing a week ago. Feeling sorry for myself. Trying not to. Right? Fed up with everything. Do you see all that stuff? Now, I went to the eye doctor people. Today is September 25th of 2024. I went to the eye doctor on June 7th. So that's June, July, August, and we're almost at the end of September. So three and a half months ago. I've been fighting with Tisha pretty much ever since, basically not talking to her. Because she wants to bully me, right? You know, she used to have tantrums when she was two. Fuck, she's always had tantrums. Only now that she's bigger and she's got two kids and, you know, she sits at home and, you know, they're getting married or something, her and Alex, and they're going to go and buy a, a home on that island because it's cheap. And, and she gone. You know, she tell me, oh, yeah, you can come home. I talked to her a couple of days ago, but it ended up into a hollering match and I fucking hung up on her. All right? Because, like, fuck, man, I can't stand it, people. Like, anyway... Telling me, oh yeah, you come to the island. I said, well, wherever I go, Aunt Mari's coming with me. If Mari's not coming, I'm not going. Oh, you don't worry if you're blind. That's okay, Mom. You can just sit there and at, by the beach and drink tea. Yeah, okay. The way you've been treating me, I don't think so. Anyway, do you see all this? She doesn't want Alea May or Kyrie to have fucking any of it. Nothing. Not a fucking thing. Now, you can see better than me. And it's just a fraction of the shit, people. Like, it's fucking stupid. Because they got toys. And she doesn't want the clutter. Whatever. Whatever. So anyway, Alea May wants to come over and play. But she can't. Right? Because, you know, I'm fussing with Tisha. Because she's trying to bully me to put Andre in school. And it didn't happen. So she's crying on about how she can't fucking read. And it's all my fault. I said, you've been sitting at home for six fucking years. Stay home, mom. There's no reason for you not to be getting up at one o'clock in the morning. Or just put the kids to bed and sit down at the fucking kitchen table. You're not the first and the last person to do that. Work in modules. Do online. Hell, you can go to an adult learning center. You can even go to fucking college and do it, right? If you determined to, quote unquote, learn to read. Fuck, like it's stupid. Oh, uh, uh, it's all your fault. And, you know my life is so miserable. Yeah, okay, that's why you're moving to a fucking island, taking the kids away. You don't even let them come over now because why? Because I give them things. I'm giving them things. Oh no, don't give them nothing. There's a gun. Whatever. Like, whatever, whatever the fuck ever. So anyway, right now I'm sorting out, like, and that's another thing. My son stressed me out so much, people. I'm having nightmares again. Two nights ago, violent, violent nightmares, where my like, body is like, I was laying, right? And, whoo, right? Because in that dream, Everything's going backwards. And I'm like, because I'm losing my eyesight, people. I'm 62 years old. I got shitty fucking kids, and that's just the bottom fucking line. They're selfish. I don't know what the hell my son brought home, but like, seriously, man. Like, I, I just, it's just, it is what it is, okay? I'm not making apologies for somebody else's fucking bad behavior. That's intimidating and threatening, in my opinion, and frightening, in my opinion. And it makes me feel very unsafe and insecure in my own house. And even then, like, nothing is safe as far as I'm concerned, because just whatever. It's all about attitude. They took Andre fucking camping. Now, I had a sleeping bag for Andre. Marcane wanted me to throw it out a while ago. And as a matter of fact, he did throw it out. I brought it back inside. I put it into Tisha's room. 
because they dug it out from someplace else where I had it, right? Because, you know, they're clearing out my shit, right? I put it in Tisha's room, and then they wanted to go take him camping, and they asked him if he had a sleeping bag. And I'm like, he comes to me, and I'm like, well, yeah, I took it from outside, I brought it back in. And it's in Tisha's, like, the business room, or whatever. It's not Tisha's room anymore, but whatever, right? So he went camping, and then they just threw it in the garage when they got back. It's been sitting out there. They couldn't have the decency to take it down to the fucking hall and put it on the drum by the door there to keep it warm and dry so that it doesn't get moldy and shit. Like, what the fuck? This is what I mean, like stupid shit like this, right? You know, I'm making a list of things that I haven't seen. Food that I bought, like, you know, sushi sheets and just things that costed me money, people. Right? Uh, I can't find them yet. Um, I'll make an extra effort to look, but... In, and in the meantime, I'm working like a fucking dog. Trying to organize the mayhem that's been going on in my life because of this, right? I've never had anybody ever do this to me. And it's awful. And it's, it's displaced me big time. And, you know, I don't have much to offer Andre, right, in terms of anything, really. And anything I have, he deserves to have it at this point. If Shimei was here, life would be different. Right? She'd be battling in my corner, and she'd help me. Just, that would be it, right? And so I'm looking at this stuff, and, like, I'm telling Andre, like, you know, we need to, you know, I, I give myself to December to organize it, right? That's what I'm doing. And that's when I'm going to bring down the food budget really, really low and bring in menus with things around the house, assuming that I can find it, people. Assuming that I can find it, that they don't throw it out downstairs, eat it for themselves, give it to their fucking friends, or sell it, for all I know. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on food prep, and I can't tell you if it's all there, because honestly, I don't think it is. No, because it's in the way. It's old. Well, if you know anything about sushi sheets, that's seaweed. It wouldn't go bad. That's why people do food prep. They, they specifically buy certain things that can last a long, long, long time, especially if it's stored in a cool, dark, cool, dark dry place. Whether you know, in jars or whatever. Okay, so whatever. So I'm saying, well, Andre, you know, maybe we should be thinking about giving some of this stuff away. Well, no, 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 I want to try and sell it first. And I'm like, and this is the point of this, right? And I'm like, okay, well, there's not much I can do for Andre anymore these days at the rate I'm going because of my eyes. If anything, Andre's going to end up looking after me and Amari while Tisha and fucking Mark Kane stand and overlord and cry on that he can't because, you know, blah, blah, blah. But yet they won't do nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing to help with neither Mari or me. Oh, Tisha. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can call me and I'll take him to an appointment. Yeah, okay. As you come in screaming and fucking hollering and then storming out the fucking door after the fact, trying to get L.A. and May to choose sides as if I even want to do that role playing anymore, right? I mean, clearly, you know, even on a good note, on a good day, you didn't care about any of this crap, right? Because you're so fucking smart, but yet you can't fucking read. So how fucking smart are you to turn your nose up on this shit, right? Just so that you can keep con con control of whatever it is that you're trying to control. I'm just saying, okay, people, as you're having your fucking tantrum like you did when she was little, I used to have to stand by the door with the door cracked, right? And make sure she couldn't run out. And I'd be like there two, three hours fucking making sure. And she'd stand there and cry and cry, fuss and cry. And then when she was like young, young, right? Like one and a half, one years old, that kind of two years old, 
three, you know, trying to put her down for a nap, right? And she wouldn't, you know, she wanted to just whatever. And I'd have to lay on the fucking bed, turn my back to her, and make sure she stay on the bed. And she'd just cry and fuss and cry and fucking fuss and have her fucking tantrum. Like, fuck off. And you still have my fucking tantrums. Oh, why, why, why are you trying to put me as the villain? Well, I don't know. Your mother's going fucking blind. She's lost two fucking daughters, right? You know what I'm saying? And Amari, it's not his fault that he got injured, whether it was at the time of his birth, to which I do. Okay, so I don't know if that was the battery or the memory card, but I plugged it in. So anyway, I don't even remember what I was talking about. I'm so stressed out with, with what's been going on. Yeah, I don't even remember people. Uh, who was I bitching on about? Marcane or Tisha or both? Well, obviously both. So anyway, I'm having I'm having nightmares again. Because my life is going backwards now. But I, today, I'm like, and I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days, right? And I'm trying not to get upset about it, eh? Because, you know, it's just, I don't know what this eye doctor did, but he didn't do what he said he was going to do. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, God, no. I'm getting blurrier and brighter and harder to see. And uh, working, working, working because, you know, I'm all this stuff coming out from the basement and you know they're piling up and I'm having to reorganize and rearrange and you know and then I took out fabric from my room to put food so I didn't take it downstairs or whatever that little residue left over and so I've tried to put as much as I could in my room but I had to take out fabric and I'm like, okay, Judy, well, if you, you know, you know you're at the, you're going backwards in life now. Like, there is no future for you. Mm-mm. Like, there is no hopes and dreams and aspirations and none of that crap no more. It's all an illusion in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and, uh. So, all this stuff that I showed you, I mean, like, I don't know how much of it will sell. Got it all over the place. <laughs> Different kinds of things, too, right? But that, you know, I said to Andre, you know, I'm not to try and sell, you know. I'm like, you're right, Andre. <coughs> Even if you don't sell anything, at least you'll learn how to. You know, for his sake, not for my sake. But for his sake, because I'm, me, when I'm gone, people, I'm free. I'm fucking free. I don't have to look back and not worry not one iota. The only thing I have to worry about is Tisha and Marcane coming in and pillaging the shit and telling Marcane, Andre, telling Andre that he can't have nothing or he can't have that or he can't have this and he's too this and he's you know you 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 know the you 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 crap you you're just a grandchild you you're just a teenager you you don't under you you don't well how, what are you gonna do with it what makes you think you have a I'm the I'm the son I'm the no you're not my fucking son you're not my fucking daughter so leave it for Andre to work it out will he have a future I don't know people the Canada it, I thought I was born into is not what you think it is. It's been overtaken by criminal organizations that have tapped into illegal organ harvesting in partnership with our government out here in Canada, among other things, in, in terms of like what they did with Sierra with the snuff movies and the fucking drug addiction for years and years and years and years to, you know, keep that money laundering fucking flowing. Just whatever. You know, he's a poor kid, right? Half his family is already gone with no accountability from not one iota stitch of anything or anybody, okay? 
and I can't depend on Tisha to be kind to him because as soon as she goes off on a fucking tangent, that's it. It's game over. And Marcane, oh yeah, just throw it in the fucking garage and turn your back on it and walk away. Like that's pretty much how that goes. Right? You're on your own. Yeah, okay. Well, why, why don't you fucking say that about yourself, man? You're 33 fucking years old, you're still living at home, terrorizing your fucking mom? Like, it's not a fucking joke, man. Like, this shit has made me fucking sick. And it definitely made me blinder faster. And when I go see this eye doctor, you know, I asked him, like, does hard work make you go blinder faster? No, no, it doesn't. I'm gonna say, no, you need to get the... You need to get your facts straight. That's not true. That's not fucking true. When you get to my point, and you're being overworked to exhaustion, literally, and it keeps fucking coming, like fucking tidal waves, and we're talking tsunami tidal waves, we're not talking little ones, we're talking big ones, big pile over there, big pile fucking over there, another shit pile over there, another fucking shit, right? Just so that you can make yourself fucking feel good after you trashed my fucking life? Like, fuck you, man. So uh, I'm like, okay, your life is going backwards. Clearly, that's what your dream is telling you. And, and of course, you're angry. You have a right to be angry. Who wouldn't be angry under this situation that I've been under for fucking years in this god-awful house? Facing homelessness when I leave it. And that's, that's the stark reality of it. So much so that even my fucking son won't move because he doesn't want to fucking face what's out there when it comes to fucking rents with our corrupt fucking landlords that run around acting like rich bitches and bastards. Right? You know, my porch is leaking like a fucking sieve. My window on my back door is ready to fall out. I have to get some gray tape and do the Mickey Mouse fucking repair on it. It's stupid shit. It's just stupid, man. But anyway, and I'm like, okay, so you gathered up, you didn't drink, and I'm going to end it on this, and this is the point of this, because, you know, they want you to feel like shit. These, these people that are abusive like this, and abuse you, and, and use you, and terrorize you, and fucking torture you, and just all these negative things, you know, sneaking around, steal your shit, fucking, fucking, why you need a box of fucking Borox, can't you go to the fucking grocery store, you're a rich fucking bitch, why don't you go buy your own fucking box of Borox, what the hell did you do with fucking box of Borox, and that's what I know of, that's what I fucking know of when it comes to that stuff, in addition to a few other little things when it comes to laundry, being that you like fabric, <laughs> and if, well, my son's in fucking denial. Thinks it's a joke. Yeah, well, that's okay. I already had a dream where it showed me that you turned your fucking back on me with your homeboys all looking off in the direction. We got into a little, you know, verbal confrontation. Oh, I don't know, three weeks ago or something, briefly, because he's got no patience for me because I'm just a pain in the ass, a useless tit and garbage. So fuck you, mom. I ain't. I don't got time to talk to you. But what little time I do have to say, I have to let you know that I've been to the three mar three weddings this month. Because mm -hmm. I didn't get married, people. I stayed home and I looked after my fucking kids and was the the mule, the one going around cleaning up, organizing, moving, doing cooking, whatever, whatever, buying food, whatever the f fucking dealing with this, dealing with that, whatever needed to be fucking done to hold down the fort, I fucking did it. Spent 12 years in this fucking yard to the point where I went fucking blind. And it, he, he he's like, as if marriage is a fucking holy grail. Yeah, okay, my Uncle Nick was fucking married, got divorced, ended up picking apples up in the freaking Kootenays. My Uncle Harry was fucking married, ended up getting fucking divorced, ended up picking fucking apples up in the fucking Kootenays. My Aunt Jerry was married twice, and, and then ended up in the fucking Kootenays. Everybody running off to the bush, right? <laughs> right? And, and lost her kids, and just disappeared and died and nobody heard from her since right went fucking crazy 
You know, my mom was married fucking twice. None of her marriages worked. My grandmother was fucking married. Her marriages didn't work. Like, what the fuck? Auntie Noreen. Yeah, sure, she got married, but I do believe to this day that Uncle George fucking killed her so he could go and paint the house and then move in with his mistress because that's exactly what he did. And she was only 60 years old, never drank, never smoked a day in her fucking life, but all of a sudden, poof, she was gone. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> and as fast as she was gone, he painted the fucking house, sold it, and moved to the fucking Kootenays with his mistress. Yeah. So there's your fucking marriage. Don't talk to me about fucking marriage. Whatever. You only knew that girl for a fucking month, a year. And what the hell did it bring me? You. What did it bring you? What did it bring you? We already know what it brought me. And you want to call that a quality fucking marriage? Yeah, okay. I don't think so. People are supposed to be humble in the beginning of their marriages. Not fucking tyrants on a mission to take over the land. In terms of like, you know, when a king decides he wants to go off and conquer a fucking country or something dumb like that. That's basically the way they treated me. As if I was something to conquer. <laughs> And they destroyed my fucking life, people. Period. And they sure in the fuck don't help. With nothing. They make me want to run away. So my, I'm like, okay, you didn't drink all these years. So yeah, it, it would make sense that you'd have lots of fabric in the house. You didn't do fucking drugs. So yeah, it would make sense that you'd have lots of fucking fabric in the house, right? You know, considering from where you came from when it, with it initially, right? I didn't expect to be in the yard for 12 years, but it is what it is. It happened, and, you know, and anything else I have left over that hasn't been raided yet, you know, I mean, yeah, I didn't fucking drink. I didn't waste my money. I could off, could off. I could have went off and did all kinds of stupid shit with it. My son thinks I fucking wasted money because I didn't buy a house so that he could inherit it when I'm dead. But besides that point, not everybody is in a position to buy a house. Not everybody can buy a house. Not everybody has the same circumstances as everybody else so that they can buy a fucking house. So whatever you're fucking thinking, you need to fucking grow up because it's clearly you haven't done that yet. <coughs> <coughs> And I'm like, okay, you went forward, you bought all this fabric, you did this, you did that, thinking, you know, positive things, you know, like the kids, right? Clearly, Tisha doesn't want Leia May to have it because it makes, I guess it makes Tisha feel insecure that I give Leia May and Kyrie things and they might love me. I guess Tisha doesn't want them to love me or something. I don't know. Uh, and, um, you know, um... <laughs> It's not anything that she didn't have available to her, but she didn't give a fuck about it then, so why the fuck would she care about it now? She doesn't. So there's no surprises there. And, uh, you know, if Shimei was here, clearly it would be different, but, you know, the reality is she is not. So whatever I've got that's remaining before it gets pillaged, you know, I'm like, just help Andre. Help Andre to figure out how to at least try and sell it so he gets those skills that's why you did it yeah and that's okay it's okay to let your life go in that direction it's not going backwards it is kinda of going backwards because I accumulated it and now I have to get rid of it right but I don't wanna just throw out another fifty thousand dollars worth of junk quote unquote just to uh, whatever right when my grandson can attempt to uh, learn a really good skill at no cost to him so that's helping me to deal with my nightmare in terms of my life is going backwards because I'm losing my life that's what's happening here people I'm losing my life and I'm going to be at the mercy of tyrants, and I, it's not going to happen, and it's not going to fucking happen. No. I got credit increases on my credit cards. It ain't going to fucking happen. I told Andre, 
if Nana wanted to fucking move that fast, we're out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I ain't spending no more money. If my son wants to eat my fucking food, throw my fucking food out, <clears throat> give, it, give it to his fucking friend. Well, it would be her, not so much him. To their friends. Well, nothing I can do to stop that from happening. Or anything else that they fucking raid. You'd think they'd stop. I'd like to think that they have, but, you know. I haven't even found everything that I'm looking for. And that Borok situation, opening a box that was... Because what I do is I pack up the box tight. Space is important, right? I had four boxes of little Borox that fit in a little box. Perfect. So, tape it up for long term because it's, you know, Borox, right? Or whatever. Put whatever on the outside of the box. Put it downstairs. Because remember, I make my own laundry soap. I don't use liquid laundry soap. I don't normally buy laundry soap. I try and save money. You know, I bought a little extra because it was on sale, whatever. And now I'm using and I don't have to buy it, right? But I'm, as I'm going along, I'm finding out that sh shit's missing. And I'm like, oh, fuck, so what? I have to buy again now? Is that it? Like, why? Anyway, you know, take, take off the tape, off the box, take out one box of Borox, close it up, tape it back up so that when I come along, I grab the box. And it's rattling inside, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And I'm looking at the tape. Then I could see a little better. Now I can see less. But I could probably still see it was all not done right. So I untaped it, or I cut it off, or whatever I did. Opened up the box, and one, one fucking box of Borox was gone, people. Why? You tell me how I'm supposed to feel safe with that. Tell me. It's impossible. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason around it. You got what you fucking wanted. The kitchen got fucking gutted. The living room got fucking gutted. You got me to practically empty out that whole fucking 14-year-old fucking sto food storage area. Right? You went into my little cubby and you gutted that out. And I, right? Gave away 400 fucking quality videos in their original cases VC8 VH, VHS right like videos with a VCR at least 400 or more that you can't fucking find some of them will be collectors are gone not to mention what was raided from Tisha's room including that picture that ended up outside with its face turned towards the fence so that we wouldn't notice it, but Andre noticed it. I mean, like, why? And then be accused that I'm the problem. So, yeah, of course I'm going to have nightmares because in my mind it hasn't stopped. Right? I don't feel comfortable going downstairs because last time I went down there, I worked three days like a fucking dog. I put in like 10 hours a day. I went down there, well, maybe not 10, but quite a long time. From 10 o'clock until 5, 6, 7. Three days in a row with mildew because I was locked out of the basement for so long. I never had it. And plus they piled up everything in Tisha's room like no fucking tomorrow. It was a nightmare. Little, literally a fucking nightmare. But I organized it. it. took me three days to do it. And then I get, well, we don't want you down here. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? I'm getting kind of tired anyway, so, but what's, what's, what are you trying to say here? Oh, well, it's, it's disruptive. Don't come down for a couple of weeks. Or a week or whatever he said. I don't know what my son said. Not because my son said it. It was because she fucking instigated it, people. That's why. That's why. And I'm like, yeah, well, don't worry about it, because, like, I just spent three full fucking days down here 
you know, I'm covered in fucking mildew, right? Because I'm wiping this and moving that and, and struggling and lifting and carrying and, you know, and like, ah, it took me fucking three days to f try and organize the fucking mess that they made. I said, don't worry, I don't plan on coming down anytime soon. I need to rest. There's other things I need to do upstairs. Dishes piled up, laundry's piling up. Like, what the fuck, right? Do you think they'd come and help me? Fuck no. So my life is going backwards. I don't have a future. Andre has a future because he's young. He's entitled to that. As to what kind of future, I don't know, people. I really don't know. I told Andre, you need to make it so that you can learn to look after yourself and Amari. That's right. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't drink all these years and waste my money on booze. I'm glad I wasn't a drug addict and wasted my money on drugs and chasing men and you know how that goes, right? I wasn't perfect. I founded a nonprofit. I spent a lot of money on that. I didn't realize what I was getting into until it was too late. Um, but I can say I fucking did park events. I did other events. I approached politicians. I lobbied the government for the, all the right reasons. I took it to a whole new level, got federal trademarks, Canada, United States. A lot of people in my position would not have done that. you think my son would be proud of me, but he doesn't. He fucking resents it because I didn't buy a house instead, even though it would have been impossible for me to buy a fucking house at home with five kids looking after Uncle John of all people yet. So I did what I thought I could do, and I gave it my best. And my kids have basically abandoned me, minus the ones that were murdered. The ones that were murdered did not abandon me. Tisha abandoned me. Marcaine has abandoned me. Shimei would not have abandoned me. She'd be here. Okay, I know that for a fact. Sierra, even in all her bad days, she'd help me clean. She'd help me cook. She'd help me do something if she thought she could help me to do it. She... And I wouldn't even have to fucking ask. Would she try and steal a little something off on the side if she was desperate for something? Yeah, maybe, perhaps. Depend, depending, you know, what was going on in her life at the time. But nothing, nothing like what my son and this girl downstairs has, has done to me. Never. Never. You can never say, don't you ever fucking call Sierra anything compared to what you've done with a fucking stranger. That you ended up betting... And marrying just because she gave you pussy. So what? So what? Good luck. Have your kids. Let them grow up. Oh, I know. You'll be like Marina's parents. <laughs> Laugh your way through fucking life. And, and still remain together. Yeah. At least I can acknowledge Sierra and her flaws, right? I have never been ashamed to talk about it. I've been more than anything sad about it because it was unfair that she became addicted to methamphetamine at age 13. But that was done by design, people, okay? Through that criminal organization that we have in British Columbia, Canada, all right? But I have never... I have never... Um, um, like those parents, I don't know, they got to know. The symptoms were there before she showed up here. Just like with Joan, when John married Joan, the symptoms were there, but John just didn't notice it. It took years for it to come to full bloom. That's the only thing I can think of as to what's going to happen in the future. But Joan didn't go around opening up boxes and retaping them back out after she'd take out a box of fucking borax and then run off with the fucking borax so it disappeared and nobody knows what happened to it. 
I can only imagine what happened to it. And if that's the case, why would you tape it up the box again to make it so that it looks like I'm the one that's fucking packing up boxes like that? Hell no. All you have to do is look around and see how I like to keep my shit. <laughs> anyway. That's what's been going on. I've been keeping a steady pace. I've got nightmares now that are physically violent. I'm... Whoa! Right? Because, you know, I'm fighting against what's happening in terms of my life is going backwards. I... My my future's been robbed of from me, and period. From my my Tisha's robbed my, like I said, I was supposed to go two weeks after January June seventh for eye surgery. I can't even go for eye surgery, people. I just can't. My son, oh well, you know I can't live your life for you, mom. You know you should do it, and I'm like, yeah, well, how? Who's gonna watch the kids for me, and at what cost? What's the consequences of getting help from my quote-unquote loving kids? Yeah, okay. I don't think so. Fuck you. You don't care. Because if you fucking cared, it would have happened by now. Yeah. So I've just been keeping a really steady pace on things. And just getting happy for Andre that I didn't drink. Fuck, I don't care what my kids, oh, you, you didn't teach me to read, yeah, no. There's millions of fucking things in this house to, for you to fucking sit down and fucking do the work. I can't make you do the fucking work, that's the problem, right? I used to sit with my one kid at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning at the kitchen table when, I, when Brooks was sleeping, working in modules, whatever the fucking modules were through like an adult learning situation you'd go pick up the module come home work in the module do whatever right struggle through it on your own struggle through it on your own do what you could go back drop it off pick up another fucking module well she didn't want to do that hell no it's too easy to blame me for her pissy ways <clears throat> isolate her kids yeah. so that she can feel like she's the one in control. I guess I was giving them too much stuff because they wanted to come to my house because, you know, they wanted to play and stuff, right? She didn't like that after a while, especially if I was letting them take home things. All right. Whatever, I don't care. I had that dream with her anyway, when Shmei was dead. Whatever happened to Shmei went to Tisha's room, and Tisha's room, Tisha was next. And I didn't want that to happen, so I woke up crying. Because at least if I didn't talk to her for the rest of my fucking life, she'd be alive. And that's pretty much where we're at with Tisha. Yeah. At least you're alive, Tisha. Why don't you be fucking grateful that you're fucking alive? Yeah. Get off your bloody pity party. Do something with your life. At least try. Stop blaming your mother for your problems. Everybody's got problems. That's the lore. Do you see that? It's gold. Andre can sell it. I probably won't be able to sew it. I might, if it's simple, but I work too hard. I never have no time to sew. Ever since I've been in this house, I've never had all. The first year, maybe in a bit, I poke a little around in my sewing room, but once I got into that yard hardcore, that was it. It was game over. It was freaking game over. It sucked up my life. And now it's making me go blind this house. So I'm going to end this video. It's okay to go backwards in your life. I think, I think that's the message. There comes a time when you just have to go backwards in it. You can't go forward. You can't have dreams. You can't make plans. You can't make future. 
you know, you, you, you I mean, you, you just have to prepare for, I don't know. I don't know what I'm preparing for, but I know it's not for me. No, not really. No. I give myself till December to get everything pretty much organized, and then I'll be like, okay, Andre, how are we going to start selling this stuff? Now we go to the next stage. That's not for me, people. That's for him. <coughs> yeah. And I have no regrets having what I have. Because at least he's got something to sell. And at least he appreciates it. Whereas Tisha and Marcane, you know, suck rocks. Suck fucking rocks. The only time they'll appreciate it is when I'm dead. And they can just overlord and take it all and... Like I say, abuse Andre, oh, you can't have it, you know, because you're just a grandson and, you know, you're too young, you, 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 it belongs to me, I'm the son, I'm the daughter, fuck you, Andre, get out of here, Andre, go look after yourself, Andre, you know, you're gonna grow up to be just like your mom, Andre, yeah, well, not if I can help it, that's for sure, yeah, so I'm glad I have this shit, even though it's annoying. Because it's just sitting there doing nothing. Well, and I, you know, I mean, some of it I can probably maybe try and use it with Amari. But Andre would have to be more involved with that. Because I can't even read the fucking books anymore. I opened up some books, man. I can't even really see it. I can't see people. The only reason I can get along and do things is because... I've been doing it all these years. Something that my kids don't fucking appreciate. Anyway. So if you accept that your life is going backwards, you don't see it as a bad thing. Because then you'll have nightmares. <laughs> right? And your body will be, you because you're mad. Don't don't see it like that. See it as as um Well, it's nice to buy, but it's also nice to sell. Right? So, you know, just fuck it. Try it. Andre's young. He'll figure it out. He's a little whippersnapper. Some chance is better than no chance. Right? Mm hmm That's the only thing I can think of that makes sense out of all this nonsense that I'm wrapped up in. Yeah. So anyway, I got half of this room done. You can see behind me what's going on there. Because I have no place, because I've been displaced from my own house. Right? I'm the one with the kids, adult kids and fucking little kids. But I'm the one being displaced. Right? And there's Shemay's keyboard piano. Usually when I'm in here, I come in here and I poke away at this. I haven't, I haven't turned it on today. Play a little tune. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to play a piano. See? You're just getting blurry. Every day it changes every single day and glasses of any kind don't work nope 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 nope
Anyway. Okay. I don't know if this was like this or like that when I was talking prior to this. Anyway, I did do the turkey. I got six jars. Plus, we had turkey sandwiches and turkey soup for a couple of days. Right? Amari's been doing really good. I, I'm not giving him those complete drinks anymore. Because, oh my god, people, you don't even know. He was so constipated. I had to take him to the bathtub and help him to get rid of that crap. It was awful. I never did anything like that in my life. But anyway, he's all good now. So, I'm not... I can't trust those things and then the laxative thing that they gave me doesn't work and anyway we got six jars of turkey soup and then we've got um, seven jars of beef soup plus there's still some beef soup in the fridge just enough for one meal and some toast or something and a little bit of beef cut up into small pieces for like um, a nacho or something but other than that I did do it I don't like canning anymore because things are just too blended together in terms of colors not that I see colors very well anymore I mean I can I, I can see the burgundy on that but and I know it's burgundy but I can see the blue I can sort of see the green but uh, it's not like it used to be, that's for sure. Okay. It took me all day to turn this thing on. I just don't have it in me, people. You know, with YouTube and their fucking antics. YouTube staff, that is. And their AI, that is, like, clearly retarded. Okay? I'm just saying. So, anyway, what I'm doing right now is just... I'm making turkey soup and I'm going to can some. I, t I bought a small turkey, cut it in half. Half is in the oven with some potatoes and carrots and garlic and that kind of thing. And the other half is now just starting in the pot, right? So cook all day, well, all night, really. And then tomorrow I'm going to make the soup and I'm just going to can however many jars I get out of it for winter time because, you know, I'm bringing my budget down. Uh, $41 a month is a bit extreme. What did I say? So I figure a hundred dollars for eggs, you know, lettuce, if I don't grow my own, bag of carrots, that kind of thing, and maybe 50 bucks for cat food. Because, well, I don't know. I make my own laundry soap, you know, people. And, like, I'm going downstairs. And, like, I bought borax, and, you know, I'd put them in boxes, wrap up the boxes, put them downstairs. You know, bake uh, washing soda, you know, the the gel soaps, to whatever, because I make my own laundry soap, right? And I buy that stuff on sale or whatever, and, and you know, bar soap, like, to hand wash yourself with the body, you know, that kind of soap. You know, different types, right? Anyway, I'm down there, you know, doing whatever I was doing. And I'm looking at some of these boxes and things are moving around. And that's not how I pack that shit, people. I'm looking at the tape. You know, someone taking off the tape, opening the box. There was three boxes of borax with one box missing. And then took out, I guess, the one box of borax. Left the three in it so everything would rattle around in the fucking box. And then tried to tape it back up like why do I have to buy more laundry shit when I already have it right like that's not fair all right so besides that point like it's stupid like it's so fucking stupid like you just don't even know it's like that cupboard with that lock being popped off and then put back on to make look like everything was fine when when I opened up that thing, and what was in there wasn't even supposed to be in there. In that wall unit, right? Or I opened up the drawer where there's food and there's a fucking box of, what was it, borax? Another box of borax? A different kind of box of borax? 
as boxes are fucking disappearing and my shit's disappearing. Anyway. And then we've got YouTube with their bullshit crap, right? So, like, you know, who wants to do fucking videos, right? When everything around you is forked tongue, right? Uh, you know? So, anyway, this is what YouTube considers entertainment and safe. Inside America's largest open air drug market, uh, Kensington, Philadelphia. And there's some dude running around with another dude through the neighborhood, you know, with drug addicts laid out all over the ground and open wounds. One guy's got his intestines hanging out and another guy's got flies and ants eating on his arm and just stupid shit like that, right? You know what I'm saying? That's YouTube fucking family friendly. Well, the kids in this video that live in this neighborhood, which is about a two mile radius, all hide out in their houses and don't play in the park. Wow. No medical misinformation there. You know? <laughs> right? And then, on this page, where was it? I'm pretty sure it was this page, or maybe it's this page. Yeah, it's this page. Look Look at the title of this one. Group suing governments, more than one, regarding, I won't even say the word, people, because if I say the word, what does YouTube staff or their AI do to my channel? They take down my video, right? Okay, look how many views. Two weeks ago. It's a class action. Against what? People. Against what? People. Against what? People. Against what? People. What makes this okay? But not what I have to say based on my experiences on my opinions, on my research, on my feelings, on my human rights to uh, express myself, right? So, who cares about turkey soup? Seriously, I got enough canning videos, so forget it. It's not worth it. I don't even know when I'm going to put this up for what it's worth, right? I do a little post, copy and paste post, you know, <laughs> right? They took one down because they only leave them up for so long, so a, and another one will disappear, and then eventually there'll be none until they start their fucking crap again based on a word or two or three or a couple of sentences or whatever. Right? But they're even shadow banning my comments. My comments on my channel. Do you see this here? Well, I copied and pasted it like I like to do sometimes as backup. But if you notice, it's not showing. But if you go to the video, well, you can see it here. See? You can see it there. Right? I even did it twice. You can see hers. It shows up on my page, but I'm logged in, so who fucking knows whether it's there or not? Because when I go into comments, it's not showing, and it should. So that kind of tells me that they're shadow batting it. Yeah, I think so. Like, there's such a hypocritical website. Yeah. Well, 
it should show here. It should show above this, and it doesn't. The ones in the past did, though. I'll show you. See? That's a different video. That's what I did. Copy and paste. But it's not showing here, so that kind of tells me that just because I think I can see it on that video, that's only because I'm logged in. And that's how fucking shady YouTube staff is with their AI and their crappy CEOs, to which okay, people. they've replaced one. So for one. what it's worth, this is the second video. They've replaced one, right? <clears throat> because one has already died, right? <laughs> See, it shows here, it shows there, there's hers, Shelly's, but it's not in my comment section, which makes me suspicious. Yeah. Only reason I see is because I'm logged in. Trickery. So anyway, we've seen that video. It's gone now. Where they're, uh... where they're um, suing governments, more than one, for injuries in relation to what's being marketed in society to which nobody has a right to talk about unless, what? I ain't gonna go look for that video no. No, I'm not. So what this is, is just mashed potatoes with some milk that I'm going to dehydrate. Mm -hmm. And there's the potato water that I'm going to use for gravy because I'm making turkey. That's going to be turkey soup that I'm canning because I want it for winter time. And then I got a piece of beef that I'm going to end up making a beef soup with it and I'm gonna can that but my canning days are coming to an end because honestly I don't like really cooking anymore because I can't see that well I don't like it maybe maybe if I uh, didn't have eyesight before I'd feel different but I feel so ripped off in life speaking of that Oh my. Um, YouTube staff and their AI at one point in the past took down a video where I was uh, reading on the VARES report, which is uh, a government website in the States. They s set up for medical injuries in various departments in terms of the medical field and uh, I think I'm going to put a little bit more milk in there yet and make sure that <clears throat> I've seen this done this way on a video on YouTube <clears throat> she put milk in hers <clears throat> I like that idea you can dehydrate milk so it will be fine but I think there's still large pieces in there I can feel it so and it's gummy but it also depends on the potato too right these were yellow and white potatoes or something like that but yeah no they took down that video people talking about injuries in relation to what people are now filing lawsuits against Oh, but that stays up. Not mine, though, right? No, 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 no. That really pisses me off. Yeah, because it's being done on purpose. The way they're doing it with me for whatever sick fucking reason that they got. Right? And that uh, farmer in Texas that likes to, you know, have that balanced report <laughs> walking on eggshells himself. Right, because of, you know, you might say the wrong thing. Well, I guess he ended up saying something wrong, and they demonetized him. Yep, well, that's because they don't want to pay out money, that's why. Mm-hmm. Something to do with 
I don't know. Carbon this and carbon that. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, because I don't want to pay out money. No. Nope. They're ripping off people. Mm-hmm. That's what they do. They use and abuse them. Yeah. Try and turn them into their bitches. Yeah. It's been like that for a long, long fucking time. More and more people are cluing into it, though. Yeah. That website probably one day will just come crashing down. Everybody will just die off. Suddenly. Yeah. No explanations. No. No. Just be a say lovey. Goodbye. Run off with the money. That's what they did. So yeah, you you know what makes this bad for a simple term? It's the fact that uh, all the things I have, like a dehydrator, uh, three stack, I have two different sizes of um, steamers for juicing, right? I have uh, two full size pressure canners, um, one with a gauge, with another gauge that I bought as backup for brand new, right? And then another one that doesn't have a gauge. That was the first one that I used with Uncle John when I first started with the pressure canner. And then I've got another one that's small for kind of cooking, but I've never used it. Still in the box, unopened, brand new. Stuff like that. Pasta machines, whether electric, there's two electric ones up there. One is hand crank. Right? You know, like, I just know that my kids don't care. Well, Shimei would have cared. You see, that's the thing. If Shimei was here, people, I wouldn't have a care in the world. Oh, God, no. She'd take over the house and she'd look after everything. She'd look after me in a good way. I'd never feel afraid with Shimei. Never. No. No. And she'd, she'd respect what was in the house. And she'd be grateful. You see, that's the thing. She'd be grateful, right? And she would look after it, and she would learn to use it. Yeah, she would have used because she liked, well, she was like me, right? She was just young, that's all. And she uh, got caught up with being naive just because I... I didn't, I didn't run around with men, I didn't have men going in out of my house, I wasn't a drinker, I wasn't a dopey, going doing drugs, and you know, I, I, I didn't encourage my kids to steal, I always told them not to, just, you know, to have morals, and, right? I mean, I couldn't control Sierra, obviously, right? Because of, you know, she was targeted very young with the methamphetamine and uh, and that's that's the thing the people who had her in terms of the handlers in terms of the ha I've had a lot of thieves in my house people over the years right because of the kids and whatever right? like my stepson Clayton you know I took him in at age 16 and oh he he was bad right? okay but, you know, he was kind of up in your face with it, right? I, I can't even see how thick this is. <laughs> right? I can't really do this anymore. <laughs> I bought that second dehydrator to do the apples. And, I don't know. There was no apples. Somebody was getting out there taking the apples before Andre even got there. And then Andre went to go go uh, see if there was apples. Even though there hasn't been, there was no apples. Because, you know, somebody was picking them up off the ground. Huh? And the next thing you know, the whole tree was empty. <laughs> so, I bought a brand new, ba brand new uh, what is that, dehydrator to dehydrate the apples. And I don't even need to use it, right? Which is fine for me, 
because I don't fucking care that much anymore, people. Right? I can't see, man. I don't like it, right? It just makes everything harder. But what makes it even sadder is that Tisha not going to care about that dehydrator. I paid 400 fucking dollars for this stupid thing. Yeah. Right? The new one, that is. Right? Same for this one. Right? Because they're big trays and shit. Just like with these, these uh, silicone trays for these, right? Silicone is better than plastic, they say. I, I have both. Right? I've got three different kinds. I've got the silicone. I've got the straight up plastic. And then the ones with the holes in them, right? <laughs> right? You know? You're going to just, what, put it out on the road? Sure, just take $800 or whatever the fuck it was I spent on them and put it out on the fucking road. It just, you know, just stupidity. No, Shemay, no, fuck no. If Shemay was here, she'd be doing what I'm doing, people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she'd learn. She wouldn't be afraid. She wouldn't sit, stand around and say, oh, you, you don't you didn't teach me. No, she'd fucking do it. She'd figure it out, man. She'd read a book. She'd do whatever, you know, fucking cruise the internet. Like, whatever, right? You know? You think somebody taught me how to do this shit? Fuck no. No. Instead, you know, they can afford to go to the grocery store, these ones that are left. So they don't care. Right? They don't fucking care. And so, yeah, like, you know, like... I don't know, people. I, I, I'm like this. I've been working so hard because I'm, you know, having to wash what's being put outside. Right? You know, the, the, because I was locked out of the basement for so long in Tisha's room for whatever reason, because I know why. Because that gutter's been leaking for 14 freaking years. <laughs> like a waterfall. Right, and that room got a little mildewy. The carpets, because there's, they didn't put a, they didn't put a, a moisture barrier on the cement before they built the subfloor. And because the house is so old, right, and the carpet's been there well ever since I moved in, and it was already old, right. And well, it was mildew and shit, eh? And it's really bad in Tisha's room. Anyway, I did. I spent another two hundred dollars plus tax for a dehumidifier. So I'm going to try it and do de dehumidifier in there, as well as I bought um, um, moisture absorbers, right? Because it's in the carpet. It's coming in from underneath the cement up through the floorboards, and then you know making the carpet damp and then what happens you get mildew right and it's, and it's because it's a mold it spreads so I, I bought tea tree oil peppermint oil like essential oils right tea tree oil peppermint oil and lavender and little spray bottles and I'm gonna make these little uh, you know I'm gonna you do two cups two cups of water to two teaspoons of tea tree oil and then I'm gonna make one just like that you spray it on a carpet you don't rub it nothing it, it kills them it kills the mildew right but that's not to say it won't come back if the moisture is coming up from the fucking cement through the floorboards whatever so you know four hundred and fifty dollars five hundred dollars later right <laughs> I mean what do they care it's cheap rent downstairs well I care because anything that I've been bringing up from downstairs, I've been having to wash. And that's not to mention, that's not to mention, uh, I don't even know how thick this stuff is, but whatever. I can't see it, people. Uh, as, as long as it's not overflowing on the edge, that's all I care about, right? Um, what do you call it? I don't even know what I was talking about. So depressed. I bought 12 of these. Do you know how expensive these stupid things are? That's the silicone. Better supposed to be better than plastic. When it gets to the point where I just can't do this anymore, do you honestly think the two remaining kids that I got fucking left will appreciate this? Hell no. 
So every day I think about Shimei. And I like, why? Why? Because if she was here, I wouldn't be worried about my safety. That's the first thing, okay? Because when I was downstairs, I put in three full fucking days, people. Ten hours a day. Okay? Didn't eat nothing. Because, you know, gotta work fast, right? Because, you know, if I don't work fast, fucking things start getting moved around. And I get accused of this and accused of that. Okay. So, alright. By the third day, I'm getting... Are you done yet? We don't want you down here. It's getting intrusive. It's disruptive. No, he told my son, told me, it, that man, it's disruptive. You know, you need to hurry up and finish up because you're being distru disruptive. I said, disruptive? <laughs> okay, you know, whatever. You're right, I'm just cleaning up the fucking mess that you guys fucking did after you terrorized all my shit. Right? Trying to not get upset about what, what what's missing so far in my head. I'm starting to make a list so that I look for these things that I know I haven't seen yet. Yeah. Okay. And while I'm down there, though, you know, I'm moving this, moving that. I, I, I did the whole bedroom, the Tisha's room. I wiped everything down. I was doing the, the carpet and just whatever, right? And fucking rearranged everything. It took me three fucking full days, people. We're talking ten hours a day without eating nothing. Okay? And because I'd get up and go straight downstairs, right? And then, uh, I, you know, I moved this box. It's a box with laundry stuff in it, right? Like I said, I make my own laundry soap. <clears throat> something's moving around. I know something's been taken out. I'm looking at the tape, and it was untaped and then retaped. And when I took off the tape, opened up the box, yeah took out one box of borax and then tried to retape it back up. That's something fucking Sierra would do in terms of a thief. Right? That's what I that's what I learned with Sierra. Somebody taught her how to go into people's belongings, do stuff like that, and then try and cover it up like it hadn't been touched. Until you go in there and you look around, and that's when you figure out that you were fucking robbed. Why? Why? And I'm supposed to feel safe? Okay. Sure. I don't know where that borox went to. Nope. Fuck, if you want borox... Go to the fucking grocery store. You got all this money. Go buy your own fucking box of Borox. Right? Being that you're so morally fucking correct here. Better than me. Obviously. Right? Because I've already been informed. I'm the one with the problem. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't steal people's shit. And then try and cover my tracks like a fucking junkie. Because that's what junkies do. After they've been taught. By professional thieves. Right? That's what Sierra did. With my turntable. When back in... At Sarah's... With the shanty shack. She went in there, took the turntable out of the case, put the case back in the closet. But I had the heebie-jeebie feelings, and I thought, you know, something said, go look. And I shook the fucking case. It was empty. I said, Sierra, that was you. Go get it, because if you don't, I'm calling the cops. She came back with it, people. But then after that, it didn't really, you know, she didn't, she stole, but not a lot, right? Near the end, it was a lot of stuff outside in the yard, just whatever, right? Because she wasn't really on the inside. But when I did let her inside, there was this time. There was this one time. I have a, a white wall unit over here that uh, I have my like beads and stuff in it, right? Sewing stuff. 
and she couldn't get in that way. She used to, and I could tell she stole a few things in there every now and then. So I locked it up, right? I locked it up. Oh, well, a little bugger went in the back, into the hall, and pried off the back of the wall unit, and then hammered, took out what she wanted, and then hammered back in the nails. I've got that same kind of individual in my house right fucking now, and I don't know what to do about it. Well, my son accuses me of lying. And that I'm, what? How the fuck, why? 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 Why would I lie about something like that? Oh, oh you, you only packed three boxes in the box. It was never four in there. Why the fuck would I take the bloody box downstairs with something rattling inside of it? I wouldn't. Give your fucking head a shake. I, I, I don't waste space. Not when it comes to stuff like that. I don't. And because it's Borox, you can do anything with that shit. Don't come to me with your fucking food. Serious. If you're that vindictive, you want to go into my fucking shit and steal my fucking Borox for crying out loud? And then try and cover your tracks? <laughs> okay. Okay. I really do worry about my son. I told my son. I did, people. I told him. When he accused me of lying. I said, well, when you start getting sick, you think about it. Because when she gets mad at you, what do you think she's going to fucking do? Look what she does to me. And I don't even know the bitch. I never did anything fucking to that bitch. Not a fucking thing. So nothing's changed, people. The only thing that's changed is my eyes have gotten worse. There's a big chunk in here. I can feel it. My eyes have gotten worse. Which makes me very vulnerable. So I'm trying to figure out, I don't know, I don't know what to do, people. I really don't. So I think like this now. I don't know why this is happening, other than I'm not the first person to go blind from glaucoma. Okay? I mean, it's really unfortunate that the government did what they did with their policies to make it so that I fell through the cracks with another 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, who knows how many hundreds of thousands of other people that fell through the cracks because of policies when they brought in their orders. I'm just saying. <coughs> to keep you safe as if they kept me safe. Um, I don't know. I can't really see. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, yeah, and then I've got these, these kind. I'm only using this one because it's a little wider, right? Because I did do some walnuts. English walnuts. They're over there in trays and I don't feel like moving them so I'm just looking for <laughs> to save space. Right? Although I should be using the silicone ones but whatever. I don't mind the plastic ones. They're okay. Right. But yeah, you think my kids are going to care about these dehydrators and my, my, my pots and the things that I use to make juice and the canners and just anything, anything I fucking have outside of, unless it can benefit them in the immediate. Yeah. So I'm like this. This is where I'm at now. <sighs> and I've been there like that for a while anyway. I mean, I'm just saying it in a different kind of way. 
there's just going to come a day when I'm going to be released from it all. What I mean to say is, right now I'm being worked to death, literally. I am being fucking worked to death. And there are people around me that think it's a joke. And they're supposed to love me, but they don't. And that's just the bottom line. They love themselves. That's what they love. They love themselves. And they're going to learn the hard way, like everything else that they fucking learn the hard way. Okay? Some of them make it. Some of them don't. She may have to learn the hard way, and she didn't fucking make it. You can almost say the same thing about Sierra, but Sierra, like I said, she was captured at age 13 through drugs. Right? And then she had handlers that taught her to be who the fuck she ended up being. Okay? And, uh... As for my other two that remain, can't really include Brooks because last time I seen him, he was looking pretty fucking peaked because the booze is catching up to him. So I guess you could say he learned the hard way too because they didn't want to listen to me, people. They got up on their little fucking cell phones, became the little computer rambos, right? Did whatever, and they all thought that they knew what the fuck they were talking about and just went off and basically did what they wanted to do. Well, that's what's going to happen, I guess, with my son. He's going to learn the hard way. He doesn't like to listen to me. Never did. And then blames me that I didn't teach him anything. <laughs> he raised himself. Yeah, okay. That's why you're still living in your mother's house. Yeah, okay. You raised yourself. Anyway... I'm at the point where I am being worked to death. I've come to the conclusion with that. I don't feel like I'm safe. Most definitely. I'm sorry. If you keep fucking stealing Borox and stupid shit like that, opening up my stuff, just fucking trying to cover your tracks like a fucking junkie or a tweaker, you know, right? <laughs> right? It's like Sierra came back to haunt me or something here. I don't know. You, right? Only this one's more dangerous. Okay? <laughs> you know? Just another Joan Duncan. Joan was kind of the same way. Tried to warn my, my, my that man, and he didn't listen to me, but whatever. He'll learn the hard way. But for me, what happens for me is... Well, go until I can't go no more, obviously. And then there's just going to come a time that all this stuff, doesn't matter what it is. I don't care if it's the fucking dehydrator. I don't care if it's the canner. I don't care if it's sewing. I don't care if it's fucking fabric. I don't care if it's fucking surgery machines. I don't care if it's clothes. I don't, I don't care. Records, books, fucking anything. I will be released from it. It will be out of my hair. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to fucking worry about it. I won't give a shit about it. I won't have to clean up after nobody and their stupid mess. I don't have to listen to them whining and crying and on and feeling fucking sorry for themselves because life is so fucking hard. Yeah, well, you know what? It was hard when I was young, too, okay? My mother wasn't there for me. At least I was fucking there for you. Right, but you're so ungrateful, you don't appreciate shit. So whatever's coming to you, <clears throat> good luck. Because when I'm gone, I'm going to be free. I'm going to be fucking free. Yep, that's the way I see it. That's what Shemay taught me. Yep, that's what Shemay taught me. When she died, I got up the next morning, everything was left behind except her. She was gone. Poof, she was gone. Nothing moved except her. 
and everything else stayed behind. So yeah, I'm not sweating it. But I am sweating going blinder and being at the mercy of I don't know what. And I, I, I have to find an escape. I, I have to. I don't know how I'm going to find an escape. But no fucking way am I going to be at the mercy of this that's taunting me in my own house, making me feel so fucking insecure and afraid. Afraid. Not only for my life, okay? Because you know, the blinder I get, the more vulnerable I become. And being that I'm accused of lying, it wouldn't matter what was being done to me. If I told so-and-so, that man, that this happened, he'd accuse me of fucking lying. So I might as well make plans to fucking go somewhere else. You, you, you hear what I'm saying, right? If you don't believe me now, and it's not stopping, you would think with half the, three quarters of the basement fucking trashed and ruined and thrown out, You'd let me have some peace. No. No. No peace for me. Fuck no. So if it hasn't stopped, because it hasn't, you wanted me to work down there, I work down there, now you're telling me I'm being disruptive even though you tore my fucking life apart and you ruined half my fucking shit downstairs and you threw out thousands and thousands of dollars as you stood up there and lie in my fucking face about it in terms of, well, yeah. Wait till I approach my son. This is missing, this is missing, this is missing, this is missing, 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 missing. Oh, you, ooh, ooh, you're lying. You never had that. Yes, I did. So where is it? Well, you didn't need it. Who are you to say that? It was in the way. It was, it was getting in my space. Yeah, okay. And you're going to look after me? Fuck you. Fuck you. And when you start getting sick, don't say I didn't fucking warn you about it. Because I won't be around to see it. I can only give you the fucking warning. And you're either going to take my advice and listen to it, and be aware, be on the fucking ball, or you're going to end up like Shemay. Because that's what you're dealing with. But it's a, it's a payday, okay? It's just a fucking payday. So anyway, that's what I think about every day as I bust a nut cleaning up other people's fucking mess. Trying to salvage what little I can salvage before it's just not going to matter anymore. <laughs> One way or another, it's just not going to fucking matter. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> But if Shimei was here, oh my god, there would actually be some happiness in the house. We don't have no happiness, nothing. There's nothing happy in this house. Nope, nothing. Never no happiness. But we'd be actually happy if Shimei was here. And I'd feel safe. Yeah. <coughs> I'd feel safe, and I'd feel safe for Amari. Oh, yeah.
need one more tray. I'm making these mashed potatoes for different reasons. I don't feel like dehydrating them in strips and everything or shredded and I have all that. I don't need to worry about that. And you know, if I'm going to pay $6 for 5 pounds of potatoes, but I can get 10 pounds for 7.99 or 8.99 or even better if I buy off the farms or whatever get it but I, you know, just I'd go for the 10 pound bag, but 10 pounds is a little bit too much to be keeping it around so I thought I'd try this to see how easy it is and how well it works out right and if it works out really well then that's what I'll do when I order 10 pound bags of potatoes or if I come across a 20 pound bag or something on sale or something assuming that I can see and um, because I mean like where my issue is it's just everything is just take is hard when you're losing your eyesight and you get to where I'm going with it in terms of things are getting brighter and the doctor should never have changed the cataract but he changed it for himself to make that rotor rooter easier, easier for himself than he was thinking about my eyesight per se and um, he, he said it's safer if they take out the cataract and then do the rotor rooter and then put in a new cataract yeah okay Anyway, um, it just gets hard. It's it's like you have to really concentrate on uh, focusing on the task and really um, be grateful that you can still do it and find comfort in that fact so that you don't get discouraged so that you can complete the task and with being worked to death from pile to pile to pile to pile as my shit's disappearing in the strangest places like I said you'd think it would fucking stop but it doesn't doesn't seem to be stopping and then when you put in the fucking effort to, you know, make it nice for them, they still fucking cut you down. Well, you're being disruptive. We don't want you down here for a couple of weeks. Okay, you only tore my fucking life apart because you wanted your space. <laughs> and then you were getting frustrated because what little left you did leave behind, I wasn't moving it fast enough. And now that I'm fucking doing it, I'm taking too long because I'm too busy fucking cleaning up the big garbage pile of mess that you made as the room itself is something wrong with it because of the fucking floorboards underneath the cement with the mildew and the fucking gutter but I went out and I bought a dehumidifier I bought moisture absorbers I bought stuff to kill the mildew in the carpet and when I go down there and I start dealing with that problem I'm going why are you down here you you alone you're making it worse no actually I'm not because it's mold spores it's just a mildew which is a mold spore and you either gotta fuck you gotta you gotta be on it right you gotta like fuck you can't just let it breed and spread all over the place and climb up on that's all I did was wash this and it was washing I'm washing 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 And now I'm like, don't worry about it. Do what you can in a day. Be grateful. Right? There's going to come a day. You'll be free. I think that's why, and that's how I'm going to end this, this video. I think that's why when we die, we can't take it with us. Because ultimately, it becomes a gift to leave it behind. Because you don't want that burden 
coming with you when you're free, if you can get what I'm saying here. And if you've worked as hard as I have for a bunch of ungrateful, I don't know, I wanted to say motherfucker, bastards, individuals, human beings, idiots, fools. When you worked as hard as I have all these years for those kind of individuals. Fucking right. You don't want it following you. Okay, so I'm going to finish this video. Uh, stuff like this. See what I'm washing? This used to be Andre's when Andre was a little boy. What is it? I don't know. Oh, it looks like it's the Hulk, from what I can tell. I had to wash it. That's all I've been doing in the bathtub, is washing, 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 washing. <laughs> I'm still washing, right? Uh, you know, and, and, like, this... Uh, that used to be yours when you were little. Uh, yeah, I know. I saved it for Tisha, but she doesn't want it because... She doesn't need it. Leave me alone. I'm almost done. Leave me alone. Yes, the turkey's cooking. Okay. Um, I was just gonna say. Wait, I'm wait, recording. I was just gonna say, can I get some milk? No, there's no. We need it. I need it for Amari. Leave it alone. You can make juice. No. Little clothes. I guess when Andre was little, some of these stuff. Or maybe Amari. I think these were Amari's. Some of it was Amari, some of it still Andre's, right? You know, and that's another thing. You know, like, I'm washing, and I brought up all the dolls and everything, so I have to <laughs> washing, wash. That's what I mean. Like, when I'm gone, I'll be free. I don't have to worry about not a fucking single thing. I won't, won't never wash again. I don't plan on washing nothing. I don't know. I'll be so glad. I Just whatever. It breaks my heart, you know, this little bag here is so cute, right? Kyrie would love to have it. You know, Tisha's on her little pity fucking party, right? You didn't teach me how to read! Well, you know what, motherfucker? My mother didn't teach me how to read either. You know what I'm saying? Okay? Or write, or any of that. My mother taught me how to get up at four o'clock in the fucking morning with a big ass fucking machete over my head, saying, Get out of bed and get up and do the dishes correctly. Because if you don't, I will take you out because I brought you in this world. And if I brought you into this world, I could fucking take you out. And guess what I would do? I'd get up at four o'clock in the morning before school. And go wash fucking dishes for my drunk, crazy fucking mother. But it taught me responsibility. So for that, I'm grateful. And I never ran around and felt fucking sorry for myself. Something Tisha has yet to learn. So therefore, that little bag. It's nice and clean now. But. What am I going to do with it? Put it online? Gives Andre something to sell. Don't want to save it for Marquette and Marina because they're rich little bastards. They can go off and buy new bags like Tisha when they have a kid. So fuck mom. Yeah, fuck mom. Just saying. So I don't know. Oh yeah, I was gonna end it on a good note. That wasn't a good note. Other than it's nice and clean now. It smells really good. It's, it's, I didn't realize it was the Hulk because I can't see it, but now that I did see it, it looks to me like it's a Hulk, right? And I got I got a big Hulk in the in the bedroom, like a big Hulk. 
Oh, a big hog. A big one. Play one. Be really nice. I could put it in there and uh, sell it. Somebody will want it because it's collectors. Or I can put it back downstairs in that mildewy room so that it can get mildewy again because nobody wants to do anything with the mildew. <coughs> and when I try and do something about it, I'm accused of being disruptive. Yeah, okay. Right? And then when they find it after I'm gone and it smells like a little bit of mildew, they'll be so dumbed down with their intelligence that they don't realize that a little bit of soap and water, you know, and soaking it solves that problem. So it'd be safer off to sell it before they just chuck it out for what it's worth. Because they don't have appreciation for shit like that. Yeah. Pretty much. And that bugs me. Where Shimei would have been different. She would have been different. She wouldn't have taken things for granted. And convinced herself that she was better than everybody else around her. Yeah. Even though she was smarter than all of them put fucking together. Except she had no street smarts. I never I never uh exposed her to quote unquote danger. And because of that she didn't get a chance to learn on her own. Like most people get a chance to learn on their own, not her. No. Her life was taken away from her while the dirty cops covered it up. Mm -hmm. These are so good. So, if this dehydrates nice, which I think it will. After that, you just blend it up and turn it into a powder. Put it in a jar. If you're not going to use it right away, vacuum seal it. And it will stay for a long, long time. And, uh... <coughs> it's uh, one part powder, approximately, give or take, to three parts liquid, whether milk, water, whatever, right? You have to experiment because every potato is different, okay? But that's just the average, average uh, um, ratio. So a half a cup, like one cup, one cup, that would be a lot of potatoes though because they swell as they're cooking. Yeah, the person said you have to kind of experiment with it. But I'm kind of doing this one to save on money because if I think I'm going to like this, honestly, mm -hmm. it's convenient. I would think after the fact, and uh, I really want to use it with Amari. Because I got to get them off these drinks. Like ASAP. Mm -hmm. Because they're bunking them up real bad. I don't know what happened, but... And then this... Uh, laxative that they gave me. They changed it. And it's this stuff. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, I am over the next little while. I'm getting the drinks out of his system. I didn't even give him one today. Mm -mm. It's like a fucking rock. It's pathetic. 
so with that you know you have to get a certain amount of calories in them and stuff and oh my god so anyway I just figure powdered potato uh, mashed 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 potato that's powdered up <coughs> a teaspoon at a time as I'm putting together his meals like I'm gonna make like I don't know what this is I don't I think that's more than a teaspoon but maybe that size I think this one's a teaspoon I can't see right I think this is a little bigger than a teaspoon Anyway, that's about a teaspoon, or maybe this one here. It will probably triple in size. That might be too much for him at one time with something else to eat. So that's why I figure a teaspoon. I think it would be easy to, to, um, cause you have to remember everything has to be kind of, it has to be pureed, right? So, you know, it's like, it's hard, you know, it's hard to uh, make small meals like that. So this might work out really good. No, I'm gonna. No, this was just some old white potato, something that I bought, and never got around to using it. And then, I'm, because I'm making the soup, because I'm making the soup, right? I have to buy red potatoes because red potatoes can the best. Because I'm gonna put some potatoes in the soup, right? Ready? Yeah. I feel like I got ripped off. This doesn't seem like your standard 10 pound bag. Unless maybe before they, sometimes they sell them in 20 pound bags. That's probably why I feel that way. It depends. It depends on the seasons and stuff, right? But I had to buy this because, you know, I'm making the soup, right? And you want to, if you're going to can, preferably you can red potato. So I'm going to have too much because I don't need that many but I wanted to get my dollar so I'm going to do this again only I'm going to do it with red potatoes and then we're going to try it out and see how it goes and I bought uh, jars that are like um, this That's another thing, you see? Do you know how expensive these stupid things are? If you buy them in Canada, they're expensive. If you have to get them from the States, they're even more expensive. But do you think my stupid kids would realize how fucking expensive these things are and why you'd want them in the first place in terms of keeping the light out so that your food is protected, right? <laughs> because light deteriorates things, oxidization, right? You know, duh. So I I bought right I had I had to I go, I had to I had to order them off of Amazon and they came in from the states. Yeah. So I'm going to make for Mamari one well yeah basically I'll have my main jar I'll have my main jar oh yeah I guess the video is not over yet right I'll have my main jar well, no, I'm going to put them in mason jars, and I'm going to vacuum seal them. But for as much as I did there, apparently you don't get very much. Right, so if you want to fill up a mason jar, you I mean, you have to do it a few times. Okay, so whatever. And then once I get, a, you know, a mason or two jars, one liter, you're right, then I'll you know, vacuum seal and I'll be good, right? And then for just that daily maybe every second day or every day depending on what I'm blending it in with Ramari with those uh, these jars I'm gonna do Amari right I have pints uh, half pints no I have pint size 12 and 12 um, one liter like this that I had to buy from the States and my kids they'll be a blip oh, just jar throw it out yeah, okay, throw out 200 fucking dollars. Be fucking stupid. Yeah, and times are getting tough, and you can't fucking see it coming. Well, then whatever happens to you, you fucking deserve it. Seriously. 
you know, being an idiot, that is. Right? Yeah, no kidding. Like, that's what I mean. Like, when I'm gone, I, don't, I leave it all. I don't care. I, I'm free. I'm fucking free. I don't have to fucking clean up after you. I don't have to listen to you fucking whine. I don't have to listen to your bullshit. I don't have to listen to nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm free. I don't ever want to have fucking kids again. Never. Ever. Do I ever want to have fucking kids again. It's not worth it. No. They're the most ungrateful fucking things on the planet, I swear. Yeah. Yeah, and the ones that are grateful are taken away from you. Well, the ones left behind, well, you got two dead daughters. Yeah, well, yeah, I sure do. Welcome to the sign of the times. It says right there in Revelation <coughs> or somewhere in the Bible that whatever happened to me is happening to millions of people. And you're not off the hook yet, motherfucker. Where's that box of Borox? I'd like to know. You should be wanting to know where that box of Borox went. Anyway, do you see this? This is a fermenting jar. This is how I'm going to end the video. So we know we've got the powder, powder mashed potato powder from our, for Amari. And just for us when we want it. But it's mostly for Amari. And to save money, right? <coughs> we know I'm making chicken soup. Sorry, turkey soup. And beef soup just because I want 12 cans of soup for the winter because I told Andre come December we're gonna go on to our hundred dollar budget with an extra 50 for cat food and <laughs> Borox <laughs> I'm bringing it upstairs what's left and whatever hand soap had to bring that upstairs, what was left. Andre goes through a lot of fucking hand soap here. What? Nothing. Okay. Stuff like that. So I budget $50 a month for that. Not that I'd spend that every month. And I shouldn't have to, but outside of cat food. But besides that point. And then, because we're not going to be buying bread. This you can ferment in, apparently. I've never done these before. It has a little thing here that you can pull off and then a little snout or something or you put I don't know. And so this is gonna one I have two of these jars. Came with two, right? And it has its parts. Little no parts to it or something. And this is one is gonna be our fermenting jar so that you know we'll learn how to feed it every day. And then because when you're feeding it, you get that excess, right? This is recording, is it not? Yeah. You get this, you get the excess. Normally people throw it out, but you don't have to. You can eat it. So I told Andre, and that's when you be making homemade pancakes, homemade waffles, right? You can make bread, whatever. Well, not so much bread, but buns or whatever. Well, you know, I know pancakes and waffles for sure, right? And maybe buns or something like that. So I got that for that. So this is for December. You know, soon. Soon. I mean, we'll be doing other things besides sourdough bread, right? We'll make normal bread and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm just finishing up whatever, you know, waiting until I just can't do anything anymore. And then when that happens, obviously people are going to talk to me. And they're going to tell me what's my back. I'm going to ask me what my backup plan is. I'm not going to lie, people. I'm not. I'm just going to tell them I don't fucking feel safe. I don't. I don't. My, my son can't fucking get a handle on it. I don't know what the hell's wrong with him. Right? Because it's serious, right? Going blind is not a fucking joke. The only reason I can do things is because my mother got me out of bed at four o'clock in the fucking morning and made sure that I did things right. Okay. Seriously. All right. I used to go to school after being up all night dealing with her bullshit, whatever that bullshit was. 
whether it was sitting there listening to her cry on about, oh, woe is me and this, and oh, woe is me is that, let me drink some more, and oh, whoa, 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 right? Or it was running around cleaning up after, her, or laying there fucking listening to the fucking noise and couldn't sleep, or whatever, whatever. So yeah, it's not a fucking joke.